Hey everyone, I'm Alfred. Welcome back to this game. So, uh, this is my third time recording this episode. I started the game up and I was back here. It was not in the cave where I left off. Uh, and when I went there, so I went there again, and then my whole computer just black screened. Um, and, uh, there was a big spider there and he was like, he said something that the daughter had said, uh, and Dijana was like, Hey, weird. Why do you know that? And he's like, Oh, I got a lot of eyes. And then he was like, you must find me three. And I was talking about how I really don't want to have to play the arcade games to beat this game. And he's like, you must bring me three arcade tokens. And I was like, oh my fucking God. So then the game black screened. And then I went to, uh, like, uh, the game crashed and I went to the arcade again and I played like 10 minutes of pie or anus there is there is no anuses in that, by the way. And, like, don't you think it might rob the story of a bit of its legitimacy when you have the developer of the game in a wig and a shitty makeup job? It's like, is this a picture of Pi or Adith? And, like, the fact that that's a real thing in this video game. So I'm going to read the fucking reviews. It's about searching for her family in a fictional Islamic country covered in video static haze. They were killed for no reason in the middle of nowhere by one of the occupying armies. Uh, I still don't know how to get the oil drilling robot into the desert. Images link thematically, but not in any consciously sensical manner. The desert is a Moyer puzzle. That's an interesting word. Is that real? Oh, yeah. Like fabric. That makes sense. Uh, even when riding duck with its whimsical music. Yeah, we listened to that a little bit. It's easy to get the feeling that there's nothing out there. The militarized zone is zoomed out, making Dijana feel tiny. Dujana. I kept reading it with an N for some reason, probably because of the N here and my dyslexia, compared to the stamped military metal buildings and razor wire. The plant is a maze populated by workers in suits and faceless yellow masks. Choose the fellow is cheery. There's a concert with randomly procedurated generated music on every block. The girl punk scene, in clo it, the girl punk scene is growing, and even though with women in conservative dress are nodding along, even women in conservative dress are nodding along with background music. Empty spaces contain painful memories of old arguments. The people she meets are soft, vague clay figures. The featureless faces turn inward as they muse a lot about their thoughts. The authorities who might have some insight about what happened to her family are beautiful, gro are bizarre grotesques made of tumors, growths, or bits of electronic equipment. Uh, we never met these guys. Uh, where their answers to find are following other people's thoughts where they lead. Dungeta discovers a, a version of the child expressing himself through play and is drawn into a diorama about the nature of desire and lost. A school teacher muses on the difference of love one has for a spouse and the love of a neighbor. A trio of wronged women offer her a chance to avenge herself on those who wrong her. Each of these conversations inform the nature of Dungeta's need to know what happened and come to terms with loss. And in doing so, the game grapples with itself in being, and with being viewed. Characters muse about authenticity. A woman dreams of cracks phone, uh, phone screens. Robots contemplate their own existence, aware of the fact they are programmed to do so. The game accepts the player's gaze and gazes back. It's occasionally distracting. For example, at one point, a humanoid spider wonders aloud whether an arcade game about Muslim theology can communicate its message despite being made by an outsider for a non-Muslim audience. I can appreciate Scottish creators Jack King Spooner's perspective on my own without needing self-indulgent reminders like this. Yeah. 
The beating heart of Dujna is tucked away in that arcade in Tuj Lafel. Six games offer a different perspective on the journey. A clone of Missile Command has the exact same morals as the game it's based on. A crude joke... A crude joke game hides a half-remembered narrative about attempting to live in vain up to the expectation forced on you. What is that? I don't know that one. Uh, is that like the... Um, it's not pie or anus, is it? A racing game, reminiscent of Mode 7 games on the SNES like F-Zero and Mario Kart. Chase after something a video game can't deliver. Yeah, because you're always trying to find your family, family, family in that one. And then the caves. Caves is King Hyphen Spooner's baby. Its prototype was explored in, uh, featured in the Kickstarter, and there's an hour's worth of dungeon to explore. So I read about this a little bit. Caves is badly out of place. It require it emphasizes unforgiving platforming and command of the non-customizable control scheme. It's aping Cape's cave story, but lacks the precise controls that make the game work. The floaty jumps and hazy visuals reinforce the themes elsewhere, meaning that the game within a game is so frustrating it overwhelms any meaning it might try to convey. It isn't necessary to finish the game. You only need three tokens, and there are, I think, six. But there it sits, an inert lump in the middle of Dujana's strongest memories. It's not a straightforward game. It's a delirious fugue state of mourning. What happens isn't clear or consistent. What's real isn't obvious. It isn't flawless either. Breaking the fourth wall is an occasional distraction, and Caves is badly out of place. Despite this, its unconventional narrative, a string of thematically linked languages, images, it succeeds at bringing the player into Dujana's life as she comes to terms with her powerlessness in the face of loss. She hurts, her pain and anger can't be felt in any way clearer. Less ambiguous games can't match. So yeah, 80. I don't know about that. I feel like the fact that this game doesn't like... So what was the Kickstarter like? Spillover from Wonderful Imagination. Fascinating ways of the rich Islamic storytelling tradition. Most unique looking game in years. Eh. Here the review is just the fact that you play as a woman from an Islamic majority country. Like, if the game is about those things, but it can't bring those... Like, if it can't bring those ideas forward well enough, and, like, I don't know if the game is bad, but, like, I can't even play it. The game keeps crashing me or blocking me or stopping me in some way. My reading, hold on. The two main risk failing to materialize in the delays. So this guy has another game, B Swing. Well, said in rural Scotland where he grew up. I mean, I'll be honest, that makes more sense. Like, for a guy who sounds that Scottish to make a game that's set in a Scottish village makes a lot of sense for me. Um, to understand the subject matter, my reading list has been as follows. The Koran, A Thousand Years of Philosophy by Ram Hare. Islam and the Future of Tolerance, A Dialogue by Sam Harris and Majid Nawaz. Free Will by Sam Harris, Of Man by Thomas, Ho Thomas Hobbes. That's an old one. Like, that's an old, old book. You will see demarcations, theories, and documents of contemporary art. I don't... I don't know about that. Like, let's take another thing. Dune is obviously very, very much based on, like, Arabic areas of the world, you know? Dune is, like, it's about the space Middle East, where space 
like space Russia and space America and space Rome fight for space oil in the space Middle East. And the thing is, is that like Dune is not made by Dune's made by Frank Herbert. And it would be very easy to be like Frank Herbert, uh, a British guy wouldn't really know about all of the shenanigans. And there's been a lot of like things that I think are valid uh, criticisms of Dune that he doesn't know exactly what he's talking about. In some cases with like Herbert has this like consistent idea that he thinks that humanity needs to be guided. And like, that's wrong. (laughs) He thinks that um, a civilization can become soft and that's why they fail. Like, uh, and back in Herbert's day, you know, there was a theory that Rome fell because the citizens there had too many privileges and got too pampered. And the actual problem was, uh, economic inequalities, uh, prioritization of military or religion rather than people or state. Um, not enough welfare, stuff like that. And like, so that's kind of what I worry about. If you're doing research on something like on the one hand, yes, you can absolutely make a, you know, something that is outside your own frame of reference. Um, and you, you know, if you're going to do that, you may as well do some research to make sure that it's not wrong. But this is something that I personally would never do. I would either write something that is from my own point of view or invent something from whole cloth, you know? The greatest risk for me is misinterpreting or exploiting the subject matter. Boy, is that right. It's been a concern of mine throughout my life as a practicing artist, and I hope to uh, alleviate it through conversation and beta testing at different stages with people of various backgrounds. And then he read Radical by Majid Nawaz, Infidel by Ayan Hirsi Ali, Reason, Freedom, and Democracy in Islam by Abdul Karim Soroush. I hope that's right. My dyslexia is... uh, It's been bad today. Uh, And Freedom of Religion, Apostasy, and Islam by Abdullah Saeed and Hassan Hassaid. So did this... Did this... Did this actually get it? Yes, it made the goal with 700 over. Um, I kind of imagine that Kotaku will have a bad take on it. Kotaku's pretty good at having bad takes. It's a gorgeous and bizarre indie game full of glitch cats, existential Spider-Man and death, with key narrative moments and small arcade of games that focus on death and dying and departs an important lesson of acceptance. We look... Uh, fictional Muslim country that is beautiful and anxious. Death while terrifying is something that we, we must accept. I suppose the difference about how uh, children and adults view death. And then a scene of impending military violence highlights the sudden casual way they could be killed at any moment. So yeah, they were killed in a drone strike. And the guy calls it a whoopsie. Puts people in robot bodies. Can't accept that they'll die. We talked to this guy. I feel like... Can I... Can I be honest here? I kind of feel like this game's use of swearing is a little juvenile because they'll just add a swear word to to a script. And like, I guess it's like realistic, but if this were realistic, then they would also like stammer and stutter or, uh, well, they would go, uh, like I have, they would stop to think about what they're saying. And like just adding more swears to make it quote realistic unquote doesn't necessarily make it better because more realism is not always better and like that's like Quentin Tarantino logic just putting in more swears is more realistic yeah Cities of the Doomed is the one that I like tried the longest on you eventually will just fail and like at some point you can just stop trying to protect the other cities and just sit under one and camp there and that's how I got another token oh you can walk out past everything
Maybe Caves maybe Caves game is about uh, accepting defeat. Mother's love. Uh, let's see, I read this one a little earlier. So I wanted to I wanted to mention this because I read this one. Uh, well, Beastwing is firmly rooted in the Scottish. Who wrote this? Yusuf Cole. Uh, Beastwing is firmly rooted in the Scottish villages and footpaths of King Spooder's lived experiences. Dijuna is set in an in, in anaglam, amalglam of Middle Eastern imagery and tropes. It's about a Muslim woman who's on a quest to uncover the whereabouts of her missing hus husband and child, killed in an introductory stream by a, a drone strike. Uh, let's see, I didn't manage to get that far, but. He says that I can just about imagine the game being set anywhere. There's hints of it being in real places like Afghanistan, Algeria, or New Mexico. Um, I don't think New Mexico is in the Middle East, right? Like, is there anything besides the United States that is disambiguation? Oh, there's a thing in New South Wales that's called New Mexico. Okay. Why New Mexico? Yeah, it's like there's the a lot of disparate cultures, as this guy mentions. Gather for Lamaze-like pregnancy classes despite living in a sensible pre-modernity. Uh, yeah, this is, this is what I was kind of starting to feel. Uh, this sentence echoes it. It's unable to deliver an impactful vision of what it means to be occupied. The military drones and families they produce are reduced to symbols and metaphors to let the player explore metaphysical themes that it could have been represented in other ways. Yeah, because that's that's the thing that I was really starting to feel and worry about. That, like, yes, I know that the game is about death and just about death. But, um... Ooh, like, I... Uh, I'm not sure if I... I'll, okay, I'll say this, and then I'll back down. It's a little cheap to just use another culture's trappings and like iconography to talk about something that you want to talk about that is not actually talking about the stuff that you're borrowing. Uh, dare we say appropriation? And like, I don't think it's that extreme in this game. Um, but yeah, like if you just want to talk about military occupation or death or something like that, then it could be literally anything besides something that people are like going through right now. Like if this was about any of anything else, like if this was like the Spanish inquisition or like world war two, I mean, God, it's not like we need another world war two game, but it could be world war two. Um, but if it was literally anything else, I feel like I wouldn't get so squirrely about it, but like, like, I talked to somebody on Reddit. I, I was talking to someone on Reddit, like, a, a couple of weeks ago. And I was like, what's going on? Uh, I was just like, what's going on? And he was like, oh, you know, bus full of kids just got bombed. And, like, that's rough, but, like, life goes on, right? And if you could talk more about that, then that'd be something. But, like, it doesn't, it doesn't talk about that. It just is, like using these things just just because you know and that's that's kind of what i that's kind of what i feel you know uh so yeah, they talked to, so then this article goes on to talk about Donut Country by Ben Esposito, which was called Kachina, 
and had like pseudo Native American artwork. I mean, you can read it. I mean, then again, I guess I'm supposed to be reading it to you. But like he doesn't he doesn't like know that he doesn't have a, a claim to it, you know. And so he got some help and he was like, I'm, I'm doing something wrong. And he's quoted here. A lot of what I was doing was hurting them. I couldn't do it justice because they didn't want me to do it justice. He concluded, if it's really important to tell someone's narrative, to let them tell it. And he changed the game's art style setting and name. And he was also quoted as saying, research does not equal lived experience. And that's the thing. Like, you know, and then, and then they go on to talk about uh, B-Swing some more. B-Swing highlights this distinction. B-Swing exists on a level that is personal and authentic rather than symbolic. You play as a young man as he explores the town he grew up in, talking to neighbors and old friends. Uh, yada, yada, yada. It's a slow, meandering walk through an old and deeply familiar neighborhood. The wider scope of Dujana, racing around the vast desert on a motorbike and popping back and forth between the different locales, contrasts with a narrow focus on small towns and people your character has known for decades. B-Swing allows more space to breathe. I have not played B-Swing, so I wouldn't know. To relate to the characters you speak and speak to and meet with. Uh, these stories resonate not only because of the game's intimate focus, but because they share the tone and texture of the environment they arise out of. They truly could not have been told anywhere else. In relying on pastiche and by separating the environment from real people and real stories, it's unable to connect in a meaningful way. That's really what I was starting to, to feel, you know? Uh, it remains successful as a window into is a vivid imagination shown through a prism of collected Middle Eastern artifacts and Oriental imagery. This value in witnessing the results of the refracted image, the Caves of Tujal arcade game within a game resembles an EDM remix of Prince of Persia. Uh, but yeah, like that's, that's kind of what I was feeling the whole time. That's what I was thinking. And like, again, it's not, bad it's just this could have been a lot better and like i'll be honest with you i actually plan to do this like this thing where i was just gonna sit and be a talking head for a little bit uh i plan to do that from the start uh because i was like because i was like hey i feel like i should sit down and talk about this um Just because, like, hey, this is something that I should talk about. Um, and, like, the game is is cool looking, I guess. Um, but, yeah, really, ultimately, it just... I feel like by borrowing and, and using these, like, ideas and icons, it's... It's really just not filling those up as, as much as you could. It's not using them as hard as you could. Um, yeah, it's just... I'm kind of disappointed by it. Uh, and again, I would have played the whole game if I could get this thing to run without crashing. Because I have now had like crashes or episodes cut short. I actually lost an episode for the first time in months. I mean, but I normally don't lose many episodes just because those, I normally don't have things like that. And like the fact that my whole, whole computer crashed is the only thing that made me lose that. And that was the problem. But yeah, Dujna, like, you lost me, you know? So, uh, if you would still like to play it and see the end for yourself, cause like, Hey, spoilers, you don't find your family again. They got killed by, in a drone strike. Uh, but Hey, you got to move on, you know, like I would have thought that the message here would have been imperialism is bad and civilians getting killed in random drone strikes is bad. I feel like that's a pretty unambiguously good, agreeable thing to say. It should be. Hey, kids, civilian, like drone strikes on civvies are bad. It's never a good reason to do it. What about, no, there's literally never a good reason to drone strike a civilian. <laughs> but yeah, like that's, that's, 
it's it's all these and technical difficulties that make me not finish this LP. And I feel bad for not finishing an LP because I usually try to go out of my way to finish an LP every time. And like, it's not happening, you know? <laughs> the game doesn't want me to play it. Like, I, I, I've gone in again and again and like I get crashes and I can't save. So I'm going to have to do it all in one sitting, like in just one clean run through. And if... If that doesn't happen, then like if I can make it all the way to the end without the game crashing and go through all the tedium, then I'll be able to do it. But it's not going to happen, you know? Uh... <laughs> so, yeah. Sorry for the clickbaity title as well. I know that I just called this Dujana Part 5, but it isn't. Uh... But yeah, I, at the very least, I'm not going to let the LP just vanish. And then in a different LP, I'll be like, oh yeah, that got canceled. Like I did want to sit down and talk about it. And I, like I said, I was thinking about reading reviews and reading at least that article, if not some of the other ones, um, beforehand, you know? Uh, but yeah, that was this, this was kind of an uncomfortable experience. Like I said, I'm, I'm disappointed by the game and like, I know it could have been more. I wish that it was, but. What can you do? Develop your own games. I plan to, but later. Uh, but yeah, I've been Alfred. Uh, <laughs> I, I'm not going to apologize for doing this LP because every game should be ready to play. And like, if your game doesn't come across well, then that's not on me. That's your fault, you know? Uh, be good to one another. Try not to appropriate a culture. Don't don't even try not to. Just don't. Don't appropriate cultures just to make your video game about something that isn't about that culture, you know? Avan Alfred, this has been Dujanat. I don't even want to say maybe I'll come back because, like, I, I don't really know if I want to. But maybe I will, but I don't want to. Uh, but, yeah, I'll see you guys next time. Have a good day, everyone. Bye. <laughs>